Hello YouTube, this is Gaurav here and today in this video I'll be sharing my approach towards the Skaggle competition tabular playground series January 2021. I guess this type of competitions will be hosted by Kaggle each and every month. So let's know what is Kaggle. Kaggle is a huge online community or online data science community. You can share your knowledge, you can learn by the approaches of other people. You can discuss your doubts and get clarified by experienced data scientists or data analysts all over the world. If anyone watching this video haven't joined Kaggle or is new to data science, I would recommend to come on Kaggle and get best out of it. You can compete in the competitions over here. You can contribute your data sets as well as download diverse data sets. There are lots of data sets available on which you can practice or implement your knowledge. Also, you can contribute your notebook. That is your approach for any particular data set or any competition, as well as you can learn from the approaches of other people. And you can contribute in the communities. You can solve the doubts of other people as well as you can get clarified your doubts. Now before starting with the actual content of the video, I would like to make clear that the approach which I will be sharing may not be the best or perfect approach. It's just my way of dealing the problem statement and producing the decent or better results. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Before jumping to the notebook, we'll have a brief idea about what actually is the competition about. So this is a competition organized by Kaggle. It's just a simple playground competition in which you have to test your knowledge. That's it. Uh, you can see the competition is closing after six days. Also, this competition does not award ranking points or tiers. That is the medals which you get after you rank in top 10 or top 5. Talking about the data, this includes 15 feature columns that is from quant 1 that is continuous 1 to continuous 14 as well as we have the target column will be provided with the train csv test csv and sample submission csv we'll be training our data using this train csv and testing on the testing one and the results which will be produced will be submitting for evaluation as you can see the data points these are really random data with some distribution We'll be decoding that later. Now, first of all, we need to download this data set clicking download all. Coming towards the approach, I'll be using Jupyter Notebook for executing my code. You can use Google Colab as well or Kaggle kernels as well. Now, we'll start by importing our important libraries that is pandas, numpy, matplotlib and seaborn. Here matplotlib and seaborn will be used for visualizing our data. We'll start by importing these. We'll be importing or reading our CSV that is train CSV as well as the test CSV using pandas.readCSV. And using this head, we can have a brief view about our data set. We'll execute this. As you can see, our train CSV has been displayed over here. We'll have similar steps for our test CSV. After importing the data set, the first step which I follow is to check or verify whether any null values are present in my data. Because having a null values can create a problem later. If the null values are present, we can replace them with the mean or median depending upon the data. Also, in some cases, we can also drop them. We can check the null values are present by executing the code dftrain.isnull.sum. Now, after executing, we can see there are no null values in each of the column, as well as there are no null values in the test. After ensuring there are no such null values present in our data, we can use dftrain.describe. This will help us to understand our data more. This will give the mean value for each of the feature column present as well as the target column. 
this this will help us to know the mean standard deviation what is the minimum value of present in each of the column what is the maximum value what is the boundary values for the lower and upper quantile ranges and many more this can be used for more statistical analysis now the next step will be dropping our id column why because when you see closely the id values are just increment values and i don't think this will help us in our performance of our model so we'll just drop them using df train dot drop access one and in place true now we'll be seeing what is the distribution of our target feature for that purpose we'll be using our sns plot that is c bond plot we'll use set style as dark you can change this from dark to white depending on your choice and we'll be keeping the figure size as 9 by 8 also we'll be using our disk plot this will give the univariate distribution of our target column that is target of color blue you can change the color from blue to green or red you just need to change the initials as G or R will be also giving the labels for X and Y axis and the title as target distribution will be using PLT dot show to display our visualization we will execute this step as you can see that our distribution is quite skewed and left part is stretched the graph is made up of multiple distributions and also the distribution is scattered around the value 8 in this particular step we'll be comparing the distribution for each column in the test and train data which will be overlapped in a one graph so that we can compare how train and test data differs from each other that is the distribution differs from each other for that purpose we'll be using a for loop which will iterate the same steps for all the columns in our data we'll be setting our figure size as 14 by 24 over here now we'll be using pld.show to display our graph for training purpose we'll be using blue color and for testing we'll be using green color so let's execute this it will take time because it has to iterate over all the columns in our data now as you can see we have got our 15 graphs we can see the distribution of train and testing data with each other now looking closely for all the graphs we can conclude that graph number 6 12 11 and 13 look similar in same fashion now let's look about the correlation now these are the numerical representation about of correlation like how features are correlated with each other but we can represent it in more better way we can use heat maps for the same purpose we'll execute this after plotting this heat map we can closely observe that the features from 7 to around 13 have multicollinearity but this actually should not be a concern for us because multicollinearity is a problem if you are interested in individual weights of variables also this won't be a problem for us because we'll be using light gbm which is a gradient boosting framework model for which the multicollinearity isn't an issue so it's better to keep all the features without dropping anyone in order to see are there any outliers present in our data we'll be using box plot to serve that purpose we'll be passing our df train our df test and we'll be comparing simultaneously our test and train data to see whether the outliers are present so talking about the box plot it is a graph that will give a good understanding of how values and the data are spread out basically it is made up of five numbers which is minimum value the first quartile the median the third quartile and the maximum number 
where the median is the middle value of the data while the first quartile is the 25th percentile which is median of the lower half of the data set while the upper quartile is the median of uh, upper half of the data set and lastly the maximum value of the data points we'll execute this one now we can see that the column count 7 has outliers present as well as count 9 has some outliers and also count 10 has some outliers present we'll execute same for our target column after executing the box plot for df train target column we can see the value 0 which is an important outlier to be focused and we need to remove that so let's see how can we remove the outliers present in our data set in order to deal with the outliers present in our data i have defined a function replace outliers which will take our data as an input now we'll be using a for loop for dealing with each of the columns in our data variable q1 is the lower quartile value that is 25th percentile, percentile of our data similarly q3 is the upper quartile value and iqr is the interquartile range that is the difference between q3 and q1 now the below code represents that if our data is outside the interquartile range we'll be replacing the data with the value of median and return our data back We'll be executing this code. Now, in this step, we'll execute this function to replace outliers for our DF train as well as the DF test, which are our training and testing data. After removing the outliers, we'll be plotting the same disk plot for the target column to see whether removing outliers had any effect on distribution of the data. So we'll be plotting the same disk plot as we plotted earlier without removing outliers. Now here we have the graph without removing outliers. We'll compare with this one. You can see the data is more scattered over here by removing the significant outlier that is value zero from the data. Once we are done with the EDA part, we'll be jumping towards building an effective model we'll store our features in data set x and we'll store our target variable in y as you can see we have separate data set for features and separate data set for our target variable our next step will be splitting our data into train and validation set for which we'll be using train test split from sklearn.model selection we will be passing our features and target data with a test size as 0.18 and the random state as 33. The test size will define what would be the percent of data which will be getting stored as a validation set and training set. For example, our test size is 0 0.20. So this tells us that our training set will be 80% while the remaining 20% will be our validation set and what is random state so random state defines the splitting of data into train and test indices if you don't mention random state every time you train your model the distribution of data points getting splitted into train and test will differ which may result into inaccurate model now coming towards the model selection i have used light gbm importing light gbm as lgb I have used light GBM regressor since our problem is a regression problem. As you can see, I have used random state as 33 similar like while splitting our data. This will ensure that our data distribution is same while splitting and model training phase. All these values mentioned are hyperparameters like an estimator, sample for bin, max depth. All of these are hyperparameters for our model these hyperparameters are taken using the grid search cv which is used for selecting the best parameters for our data even not setting hyperparameters will result into decent score 
but the only reason why we set them is that every model is not the same it is not necessary that default parameters which may work great on one sample will also work well on another sample because you know each data has its own characteristics as well as significance so the parameters which we will set this improves the accuracy because our model fits the data perfectly i will not go in depth of how these parameters were taken because as you know the competition will come to an end within next four to five days so you can just use these parameters and give your best shot in competition but yeah you can check my another notebooks my other approaches by clicking the link given in my description we are done with our model execution and i have just skipped the steps as it takes a bit long time to train now we'll be using our model to find the predictions of the x test and we'll test those results using evaluation metric as rmsc score that is root mean squared error i have imported mean squared error from sklearn.metrics and took square root which results as root mean squared value i have used this evaluation metric because the evaluation system of our competition will be using this same now once we are done with this we will predict the actual results by predicting and using our model for actual test data provided by kaggle which will be evaluated we'll just execute this and finally we'll be creating a data frame for ids and predicted values and save this in form of csv once you are done saving your csv in your desired location you need to visit back to this kaggle competition page and click on submit predictions on this page you'll need to upload your submission that is a csv file over here and click on make submissions once you are done with this kaggle will evaluate your submission and your score will be displayed over here you can click on leaderboard to see your world ranking based on your submission this is my kaggle profile and here you can see i am ranked in top 11 percent for this competition this was all from my side and there is no such right or wrong approaches here this was just an approach from my point of view dealing with this competition i'll be sharing the link for the code in the description below you can check out my other approaches as well in my github repository if you like my video and if it was helpful for you in any ways don't forget to like share and subscribe do share your genuine views about the video in the comment section below and thank you so much for watching take care and bye bye